Unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. In the fabric of South Africa's history, the colored community occupies a unique and often painful position where from the earliest days of colonial exploitation to the complex dynamics of modern political engagement, their story is one of systematic othering, which is a situation deeply rooted in both the past and present of South African politics, state and society. Hello everyone, my name is Nalidim Fuller and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the latest edition of the African Diaspora News Channel where we unravel the stories that shape our world and our communities. Today we dive deep into the currents of information from the pulse of politics to the heartbeat of entertainment. We've got it all covered so please stay tuned for a news experience like no other. The beginning of this community's struggle traces back to when individuals from the Indian Ocean Rim were forcibly brought to the Cape as slaves, merging into what would be known as the coloured community. Now this blend of cultures and history, however, would soon confront a legacy of discrimination and marginalisation that has spanned centuries. Fast forward to contemporary times where the African National Congress, which is the ANC, seeks for support from colored Indian and white communities for their upcoming elections. Now, this is a move that is seen by some as opportunistic against a backdrop of perceived long term neglect. Now, despite the ANC's pledge for inclusivity, the echoes of alienation and disregard re resonate strongly within the coloured community. And I do think this is a sentiment not new, but inherited from generations of systematic sidelining. Cyril Ramaphosa at the, at the UDF's uh, um, 40th commemoration, he mentioned there to say that coloured Indian and white people felt neglected. He mentioned that it was the ANC that actually lost the 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 um, non-racial character, and and the reason why these parties are coming up and starting to speak on 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 other race issues is because this very same system of 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 classification, race classification. I mean, in this day and age, we are still sitting with the classification that says coloured people are not African, mm -hmm. and then you have indigenous people to this country, the Khoi, the San, the Khrikwa, and so forth, are not being recognised as African but they are being classified as coloured. So it is this, this democracy, this government that is responsible for the mushrooming of parties mm. now wanting to speak to people's issues. From my observation, I, I do think that from colonialism to apartheid and now in our democratic era, the narrative of not belonging fully to any category has burdened the coloured communities. They find themselves fighting not just for recognition, but for a fair share in the nation's present and future. For the coloured community, unemployment is at nearly 22%, still lower than for the black majority. Do you feel judged by what skin colour you are? Well, I went in 2015 for a job. I went, I, they said I should come back. The second big manager didn't even look my way because I was a colored. He told the big manager that he's not taking people. So you've been through the, you're not black enough, you're not white yep. enough. It was discouraging. I gave up for a year to look for work. Do you think that communities like Westbury feel, feel marginalized because they are predominantly colored people who live here? Yeah. We feel like, like we maybe like looked over most of the time here. Yeah. 
Staying off the streets and out of trouble is a constant battle for young men like Luther. Personal stories like that of Lou the Noble reveal a deep-seated feeling of betrayal and disappointment. These sentiments are not isolated but are echoed in townships like Westbury and Gauteng where residents voice fears of being systematically pushed aside. They distress manifesting as violence and social unease. Now, the ANC's recent acknowledgments and efforts to bridge these gaps do hint at a possible turning point. Yet, I think the real test lies in moving beyond just rhetoric to actually tangible actions that reflect a genuine commitment to healing and an inclusive development. I also think that as a country urges towards another electoral milestone, the coloured community's plea for visibility and equality does underline a broader national conversation about identity, historical justice and the true essence of a non-racial democracy. Let me ask you this. Um, when the racial categorizations are made in this country under, for example, black economic empowerment, employment equity, colored people fall under black people. Why do you feel the need? No. 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 Yes, yes, let me make, let me finish my point and then you can respond. Why do you feel you must hold on to that identity and why it then leads to the exclusion that you're talking okay. about? <clears throat> there, there can be many reasons, but the, the sole reason is we are a social construct in this country. Secondly, constitutionally, we have the right to associate us with whomever we want to. Yes. We are colors. There's nobody representing us here. I'm ask, just asking for fairness. I'm saying if we are really serious about speaking about racism, let us give each other a fair chance. Let us say there must be a black person, there must be a colored person, a white person, an Indian person. But you can't say let's talk seriously about racism, but you exclude us. Yeah. Now, in, in a nation as vibrant and varied as South Africa, the path to unity is complex and charged with challenges of the past. However, I do also think that it is through acknowledging, respecting and valuing each thread in the nation's diverse tapestry that a more inclusive and fair future can be narrated which is one where every community, including the coloured community, feels at home and valued. They are saying that this targets are directed to whites, coloureds and Indians. But you know for a fact that the white people benefited mostly, totally through apartheid. This Employment Amendment Act will not affect them. It maybe will affect their businesses in terms of tenders and that kind of stuff. The Indian people, they have businesses, 1.7 million of them. Yep. But when it comes to the colored people, they will be the hardest hit. We are tired. We are rising up now. We need to think of our children, our grandchildren, their futures. And that is why we all are standing together, fighting against this bull. The social ills within our community is based on the fact that we marginalize all the time and then we're not given fair opportunities. We are here to make sure that our voices are being heard and that we are afforded equal opportunity in all now, with that being said, please share with us your thoughts in the comment sections. We want to know what you think about this. And also, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That's it from me. Till we meet again, it is goodbye for now.